Just on the horizon, there is hope. Ahead in your future, there is victory. Even now, the troubling circumstances that shroud your life are beginning to fall. It's time to get ready for heaven's supernatural invasion of promise, provision, and power. Today on God Knows. And we, you know, we are just, we're talking about what God was doing about revival. We thought, no, we've got to do one more show on God Knows. So if you have been watching, want to re-welcome Sean Smith, a revivalist, wrote a great book, I Am Your Sign, been used on university campus. He, can I say this? He is a preaching machine, okay? He just gets up there and blasts it, and the power of God just moves through him. So welcome again, Sean. Welcome we're so again. glad Thank you're you here. Like you, Love you guys. Yeah, and we were talking about some of the other great revivals. One was St. Patrick's. You yes. just got to tell about St. Patrick's. Have to. Oh, please. St. Patrick's, this is such an incredible thing. St. Patrick's was actually of England in terms of descent. Everyone thinks of him as being Irish, hmm. but here is the story behind it. He was kidnapped by slave traders that murdered his dad. Uh, mysteriously, his sister disappeared at the same time. They brought him over as a teenager to Ireland for seven years. He's a slave. Can you imagine that? And then he has three separate, he had been a nominal Christian, he had three separate visions and encounters. And one of them told him to, at a certain time, go over to the coast and there would be a ship. He had no money, so he follows his vision, goes over to the coast, uh, he's on the ship, it takes him back home. Well, while he's at home, he gets his third vision and he hears the children, a generation of Irish kids calling out to us and they called him Patricus. They said, Patricus, Patricus, who will tell us about Jesus? And so here is the miracle. A guy that should have been offended, should have been bittered by the people that enslaved him, gets a burden and goes back to the same place willingly he was mistreated. He goes there, long story short, he wants to get permission to share Jesus Christ with the nation. So he goes to, I think, the president of, of, of Ireland at the time, or the king of Ireland, and he had Druid priests, all these witchcraft people. Today they would be Wiccan, today they would be in witchcraft, and there's no greater message in revival than the power of God over the power of the devil. So all of these Wiccan Druid priests are doing demonic enchantments, and then the, the king turns, and I love this, he turns to Patricus, or St. Patrick's, and says, what can you do to compete with this? And I thought about what I'd have done. I'd have asked for the sick. I'd have tried to pray for someone. I love this guy. This guy goes straight Braveheart. He walks down a line of 20 Druid priests. This is St. Patrick's being asked again, what can you do in the power of God to compete with this demonic power? And he casts the devil out of all 20 Druid priests. One of the stories had one of the Druid priests levitating. And when the devil was cast out of him, the guy collapsed to the ground. And then the king of Ireland turns to uh, 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 St. Patrick's and says, you can preach your message all over this nation. And the history shows that one man turned a nation from paganism to Christianity. That was a former slave. It's a phenomenal story. Yeah. A young man named Patrick just yes. that God used to change a nation. You know what? Can God do that today? Of course he can. Yes. You know, it just takes somebody that's saying, I'll be that person. I'll be that one. I want to be that one. Why not you? Why not now? Why not today? Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. You are watching God Knows in the purpose of God. You know, you could have been doing something else. You're watching God Knows. And here we are, Sean, Mike, and I sit in the studio telling you a story about Patrick. Maybe you're Irish. You know, maybe you're English. And maybe there you've is been a something. Slave. Yeah, maybe Ooh. you've been a slave. Maybe you've been in sex slavery or, you know, human trafficked or whatever it is. But don't stay a victim. Let mm. God use that. Turn it upside down. You know, I mean, little David, when he was just a shepherd boy, could have been a victim because his daddy didn't love him. His daddy didn't think he was the king, could be the king. You know, he isn't worthy to be the king. But no, that didn't stop David. He didn't become embittered by that. He didn't become rejected by his daddy. And he became a great leader. Well, there's greatness in you. There's greatness in you. And so, you know, 
Is God going to do it today? Yes. I mean, are we going to have another Jesus, people? Do we have any hope? Okay, I had this dream. I got to share this because I think it's so important. Evan Roberts, before the Welsh revival, he's in prayer as a teenager. He sees a vision of a hand come down from heaven and hands him a, a letter. And on the letter, it had 100,000 on it. He goes out and tells his friend immediately, says, do you believe that 100,000 souls could come to Christ? And this is the time in which they had cockfighting, that they would fight roosters and bet on it, that uh, literally it was a gin craze. People were in a soccer frenzy. And he says, yes, history shows that within nine months, 100,000 people got saved. So God uh, multiplies visions. So let me tell you this. I had this dream. In this dream, there was a man of God uh, that I didn't know at the time. He's in the driver's seat. I'm in the passenger seat. In this dream, he turns and he prophesies to me. He says, Sean, you're going to see a national outpouring of the Spirit. He says, you're going to see a generation raised up that's going to be armed and dangerous against the enemy that's going to bring down powers and principalities. And then he prophesies a third thing. I wake up out of the dream thinking it really was real until I woke up and recognized it was a dream. So I grab my journal and I'm journaling it down. All right, I'm going to see a national outpouring of the Spirit. Okay, I'm going to see a generation raised up signs and wonders and armed and dangerous against the enemy. And then I go to write the third thing I don't remember. I called up intercessors. I asked people to pray for me. For months, I didn't know what it was. Found myself in the same city that this great man of God had a church because I'd gotten his book and I saw in the back of his book, there's where he's at. So I took a chance, called up his church, make a long story short, he makes time for me. He doesn't know me. I know him. He doesn't know me. I come in his office. I sit down in a seat in Boulder, Colorado in his office. And I said, hey, and I called his name. I said, I had this dream and in this dream, and he stops me. He says, the Lord would say to you, you're going to see a national outpouring of the spirit. You're going to see a generation raised up that's going to be uh, armed and dangerous against the enemy. It's going to bring down powers and principalities. And remember, those were the two components of my dream. I hadn't shared it with him. And then he goes to number three, and I begin to just get chills and teared up. He says, you're going to see a Jesus people movement in his glory. Then he gave me a passage of scripture that has all three components. And I want to tell you, as I studied the Jesus people movement and how kids were coming off, dropping acid, dropping shrooms that were, uh, uh, they were dissatisfied with established uh, franchise government, et cetera. And as a free love thing and a promise of all this stuff that was failing them, I feel like we're eerily in a similar situation for a flashpoint amongst a generation throughout the nations of the world that have been lied to as far as where real satisfaction will come. But I'm here to tell you, a new Jesus people movement is underway, and we're going to see millions of kids, hundreds of millions of kids come to know the Lord, and I think this is so key. You know, um, you have a son named Brandon. Yes. And he's a basketball player. Yes. Tell us, tell, tell some of his brave heart stories. You know, he's been really mocked. I, I love this. Uh, my son just finished four years uh, of playing at a major university in the United States of America. And uh, when he was a freshman, uh, my son has a message of purity and he's a virgin. And he's saying, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to hold my purity and hold my virginity until I'm married. And God obviously sanctions it and blesses it in marriage. So he's in the locker room. This is the classic place where many people lose their witness. All the guys came in, and there was a particular guy that was from another country that had lost his virginity that summer, and so all the guys were applauding. And so they turned to my son, Brandon. They said, Brandon, are you a virgin? And Brandon felt the pressure like any kid would feel. He's a freshman on a senior-laden team, and he looks at the guys all in the eye and says, yes, I'm a virgin, and my purity is precious to me. And he says, I'm not going to give that up until that day I get married. And he heard some stickers and people laughed and different players went in different places. And then all of a sudden, a couple of the guys came back to him and said, Brandon, I respect that. Another guy says, I set out to do the same thing and I lost it. But I just want to encourage you, Brandon, keep doing it. As a result of that, Brandon, fast forward that. Brandon headed up his, his own campus ministry there, Campus Awakening, associated with Jesus Culture. As a student, he ran it, full-time scholarship basketball player. And they had myself come over and another worship leader, William Matthews, and they had 300 students come out. And we saw signs and wonders and people get saved. And so your stance for purity, there is such a pressure to give up your virginity and to give up your purity. And I'm telling you right now, your purity is your power. Now, there's grace because my testimony is different than my son because I didn't get saved till my college years. And so I was not a virgin when I got married. But then I got saved and I was pure from that place on. So I believe that the message of this is if you have not given it up, don't. <laughs> Maintain your purity. If you have, there's grace. 
but it's so important to be a pure vessel that God could flow through. Yeah, and weren't, I mean, didn't he get mocked, though, because he, did he was a mocked. virgin? Yes. There's another instance where he's playing in high school at the opposing gym, and somehow the testimony of his purity went to their rivals. So he says to the free throw line, they mock kids, an opposing team on the free throw line. They, the 1,700 people in the gym, they all sounds like in unis, unity. They go, he's a virgin. He's a virgin to mock him. And so I wasn't at the game. I called Brandon. He told me later. I said, what did you do, son? He says, number one, he said, Dad, I wanted to stop and tell everybody, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. He didn't say that. He s calmly sank both free throws, but as a result of that, a testimony went out throughout the area that there's a young man standing for purity, and so it's so incredible. And God gave him a, a vision that he would go to the college he went to and that the coach would come and do a home visit and that's exactly what happened. And so God fulfilled his dream. Yeah, I mean, I, there's got to be a counterculture movement. Yes. You know, uh, a lot of times we're just a subculture of everybody yes. else. You know, a little better than they are, whatever. But, you know, we can't compare ourselves with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Holy Spirit is bringing this uh, amazing uh, people like your son that are so different and proud of it. Yes. You know, that are going to set this in. And I think that, that other people, they just wish somebody could be a Christian like Christians say. It's like maybe if one of them could make it out there, you know. I mean, whether it's in the entertainment industry or whatever, it seems like we get one coming up and they fall down. Get one coming up and they fall down. That's you know, right. there's got to be somebody that sets the standard. There's got to be some standard bearers. That's right. And I believe in this, you no know, Jesus people movement. Don't you think there's going to be that, you know, standard bearers that rise up? Absolutely. I think part of being a sign is that your convictions and your life are so different. Because here's the bottom line. You cannot be frozen in a culture you've been chosen to transform. If you get caught up in the very culture that God is calling you to bring reformation to, you're more part of the problem than part of the solution. So I believe as you make a stand, God will honor that stance and simply your presence will begin to speak to people. Yeah, I feel like there's some people watching and you have a Bible club, you know, on your campus. You want to start a club or maybe you want to start a prayer group or, you know, you are watching. And because the Holy Spirit wants to encourage you, you're watching right now. I mean, you could have been watching some other show. You're watching God Knows. You're you're hearing Sean Smith and about him and his passion for campuses. And you're going, well, if Sean could do it, if Brandon could do it, I can do it. Listen, be a standard bearer. I feel like that's going to be a hallmark of this whole generation's holiness and purity, the wind of God on it. I mean, I can feel it all over you. This is mm. the Jesus people step. Yes. And, you know, I think it's his next move. Make no mistake about it. There's a new signs and wonders era that's going to be released. When Jesus said the greater works era, there have been notable figures, whether Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Simple McPherson, uh, Mariah Woodworth Etter, uh, on and on and on that were used, John G. Lake. But I believe there's going to come a generation that's going to walk in that. And right now in the late 1940s, there was the great healing revival uh, that they would fill up tents, hundreds of tents around America it was filled signs and wonders. I'm living right now to tell you you can go to YouTube and find 12-year-old kids in their youth group that are seeing the same miracles on street corners. And, man, there was a group that went to Disneyland and began to lead people to Christ, and they're seeing legs grow out. And they're seeing, literally, people that don't know the Lord that all of a sudden are receiving miracles on the spot, and they're just, like, frantic and shocked and surprised. And I'm telling you, there's an acceleration. And I, I think one of the biggest keys is for you to say, God, I want to live a consecrated life. One of the things in revival I think is so important is that in revivals, alcohol sales plummeted and the sales of Bibles soared. And I feel like we've got to dedicate ourselves to the word, word of God and set our lives apart and not get caught in the wine of this age because God's pouring out a new wine, spiritual speaking, and that we want to be filled with the Spirit of God because I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Spirit of God is one of the key components to releasing the Spirit of revival. Yeah, you had a couple of Bible verses, you know, just talking yes. about revival. What were they? Habakkuk 2.14 says, as waters cover the sea, so shall the knowledge of the glory of God cover mm. the earth. My question is, is there a dry spot on the bottom of the Atlantic or Pacific or Indian Ocean? Rhetorical question. The answer would be no. Saturated. Now get this. Habakkuk is prophesying in a dark season that as waters cover the sea, so shall the knowledge of the glory. The knowledge of the glory is experiential. Habakkuk is prophesying there will be an experience of God's glory that will cover the earth like Water covers seas. Second of all, 
Matthew 24, 14, Jesus prophesied how it's going to end. It's not going to end over a rumored nuclear red button that a leader of a state. It's not going to win over, uh, over al-Qaeda terrorism. It's not going to end over all these other things. He says, and the gospel of the kingdom we preached into all the world, all the nations, as a witness to the world, then the end shall come. The gospel of the kingdom is not throwing a track out of a helicopter in Djibouti, Africa, flying over it. The gospel of the kingdom is the blind see, the lame walk, the dumb talk, cancer rolls off your body. So let me tell you, when that happens, people are not going to yawn and say religion is good for you. They're going to come to Christ. Third and final of all, Revelation 7, 9, John at the end of the day looks up in heaven and he says there's a multitude, no one could count, of every tribe, tongue, and nation. Stop. Their nation's close to the gospel, but I decree you must open up because the writer of Revelation says every nation is going to be represented. But he did this, and I love it, and I'm done with this. He says a multitude no one can count. This few are going to go to heaven thing needs to shift to the billion soul harvest in the earth. I believe that right now we've surpassed a population of 7 billion people on the planet. There are officially more people alive now that know Jesus, that are Christians, that have ever lived and died before that knew Jesus, but consequently, they're more alive right now that don't know God than all the people that have died without Christ. This is a pregnant moment that God is rolling up his sleeves, and you and I are going to be a part of the greatest ingathering of souls and nations of the world has ever seen for those reasons. Okay, we get just a few seconds. Pray for impartation. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, right now, I know that it was through a dream, through a series of dealings, through the word of God, that, Lord, you gripped my heart for revival. You caused me to see how important that Jesus' name being made famous in a generation is. I pray, God, right now, you'd begin to grip souls. You'd begin to grip people over their workplace, over their schools, over their family members, that they would be gripped to see the glory of God at all costs. I pray, Father, that you'd begin mm. and have permission to break our hearts for those that know the Lord, that don't know the Lord. You would wake up us up in the middle of the night and give us prayer targets and to pray for people. And that God, I pray that a spirit of revival would so grip us that you would begin to cause us to begin to align ourselves with the word of God and not just cultural Christianity, but biblical apostolic Christianity. And I pray a new right now, a new fire to embody everything that Jesus wants us to become and that, Lord, we would literally become walking websites of god.com mm -hmm. wherever we would go, that people would see signs and wonders. And finally, I'm asking God that you would allow uh, literally a new demonstration of your glory to come off people's hands and mouths and lives in Jesus' name. Woo! Yeah. Wow, yeah. don't you love yeah. it? Okay, come on. We're going to be right back in a few minutes, and we're going to get into more personal prophecy. Many people write us. Maybe you want to write us your testimony, GodKnows.tv, and tell us what God did while you were watching the show. We love you. Stay tuned. Be right back. We want to invite you to take a journey with us for freedom, to take a journey with us for justice. Every day, valiant freedom fighters put their lives on the line to stop human trafficking. What can we do? What can you do? You can pray, you can be informed, and you can act. You may not sense it, but on the horizon there is hope. You may not realize it, but ahead in your future there is victory. Even now, as circumstances work to shroud your life with worry, doubt, and despair, heaven itself is preparing a supernatural invasion of promise, provision, and power. In his invigorating book, I Am Your Sign, Sean Smith unveils the hidden accounts of God's supernatural involvement in the lives of people like you throughout modern history. As you read its encouraging and hope-filled pages, you'll discover that recent history is full of examples of God's move of His Spirit, that Scripture promises a supernatural life through Christ, the divine strategy that has eternity poised to burst into this generation, that what God did for believers before is what he wants to do again. As our thank you for your special gift of $25 or more, Mike and Cindy want you to have Sean Smith's empowering book, I Am Your Sign. They also want to send you a copy of Cindy's CD, Press Toward the Mark to Reach Your Destiny. 
This stirring and uplifting message will strengthen your faith and help you keep moving toward the destiny that God has prepared for you. It's because of your faithful financial support that Cindy and Mike are able to take the prophetic word of God to so many searching hearts around the world. And your gifts help keep the God Knows television program coming to you every week. Call now with a special gift of $25 or more. And as our thank you, we'll send you Sean Smith's book, I Am Your Sign, and Cindy's message on CD, Press Toward the Mark, to reach your destiny. I welcome back. The Lord is showing me that there's someone, you live in a very small town, and you're just thinking, Lord, could you use me? And the Lord is saying to you, I know the size of your city. I know where you are. I know where you live. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to use you. This is what the Lord is saying. I think as I share the story about uh, Brandon, I... I I sense that there's a girl that you head up your Bible club on your campus. And right now, at least at the end of this year or whenever it is, that there has not been the attendance that you thought. And I'm convinced that God is saying to you that as you stand and you pray, that God is going to bring increase. And he's going to begin to cause people off the basketball team, cheerleaders, other major people at your school to begin to attend your Bible club. And it's going to blow up in Jesus' wow, name. Wow, yeah. Mm. Well, during the break, I was really sensing this. And that there are people who are watching the program and you've been really wounded by believers. And in fact, mm -hmm. when, when we were talking about uh, Brandon, we, Cindy and I know Brandon, Sean's son, and he was not saying that he was better than others because of his stance. And you've been mocking the body of Christ because in your view, they think they're better. Well, that's not the truth. We, we know we have no more right to revival than the Ninevites had when Jonah came there. So just as a member of the body of Christ, if you've had people who've, who've given that impression, we just want to repent to you for that. But say this, that God is real, that Emmanuel was sent to the earth. He is calling you today, if you don't know him, to come into relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And so you must hear what the Spirit of God is saying, even if we as Christians are not articulate enough to present it to you. Yeah, you can be saved right now. Just say, Jesus, come into my life yeah. and forgive my sin. It's as simple as that. You know, there's someone that you have had a prophecy, and your prophecy was this. You are called to be a revivalist. And God is just saying to you, I'm confirming that call right now. This whole time you've been watching this series on God Knows, you felt like you were just buzzing with the power of God. And the Lord just says, take it right now. I release the anointing that God has given me for salvation, to get people saved, to prophesy. You can receive it right now, right through the television set. You know, there are rival gangs in the Los Angeles area, but they're all over, Crips and Bloods. And I felt like the Lord is going to begin to call people out of gangs and begin to cause them. They understand authority. They understand the head of the gangs telling them, but you're inside of a gang. God's calling you out. He's going to save you, put his spirit on you, because you're called to be a part of Jesus' gang and really bring territorial uh, damage against darkness. And God is going to call you out and do some phenomenal things. And I also quickly sense that there was someone that you one time walked with God, you were involved in ministry, but you have backslid, and God is calling you back. And the, God wants you to know he's a God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances. You've been miserable, and that's God's grace because what you're doing now is not the assignment on your life. God's calling you to big and great things. Oh, that is so true. The Lord shows me there's someone actually watching in the mafia, and you just happen to watch this show, and the Lord is saying, you are mine. You are mine. Mm -hmm. And, and right now, just repent, repent of your dealings. God is going to keep you safe. He'll help you. I have known people that were in the mafia, even involved in Russian mafia, and God just pulled them out of that. So leave. God, leave. God says just leave what you're doing right now. You got something there? I do, yeah, because I, I know from, from just knowing people, there are people that have not heard. They've heard it with their ears, but they've not entered their hearts. When we say that you are not disqualified, you need to receive that. God is the one who qualifies you. If you will turn to him, he is going to supernaturally wipe away the mistakes that you've made and you'll have a fresh start and he will use you to be one who is an ambassador of the message of people's redemption. So receive that even today. Get rid of that word disqualified in your vocabulary. Well, I feel you need just a decree. Come on, the revivalists are coming. I feel we're going to do some decree. Let's just do this, you know, right now, right now. 
Number one, I just want to decree right now that a new spirit and hunger and desperation for God to tip your nation. I decree right now that God would begin to give you dreams of seeing redemptive waves of God and an outpouring of God's spirit in your workplace, in the marketplace. I decree right now over you a gift of faith that would body slam the doubt and the unbelief and all the other things that have warred against you. The devil is uh, giving you an Instagram. Do not click like on it. God's picture <laughs> over your life right now is abundance and open heavens that begins to reign. So I just want to decree that over Amen. you. Amen. And we have a really special offer. I am your sign. The secret to unleashing revival and igniting a national awakening. I read this book. We're going to make an offer for it for $25. You can get Press towards the mark uh, to redeem your destiny. I preached this message. I was on fire when I preached this message. So for a donation of $25 or more, listen, help us be on television worldwide. It takes a lot of money to be on television. Your gift today, we pay the postage. We send it to you. Make sure you get it. Call the 800 number on your screen. Right, it's at GodKnows.tv. This is and a great gift, Cindy, for those who are youth gift. leaders. And you ought to be doing Bible studies with your kids. On this book, it's an amazing thing. It yeah, will ignite a group. passion within them yeah. that they, they've not tapped into. So get this, get a bunch of copies, get your youth to read it and study it, and they will have a new passion. Yeah, order today, and you are going to be changed and shaken. Can I say that? Well, thanks for watching. Thanks, Sean, for being with us. Love you guys. Five shows. We love you too. God bless you. Did God do something miraculous in your life that you'd like to share with us? Send us your story when you write us at story at godknows.tv. We face a critical moment of decision. Without a change in direction, the United States will accelerate into unstoppable decline. Will this nation remain a city set on a hill or is it headed over a cliff? It's time to make a stand. That's why we must take two critical steps to pray and to act. The United States Reformation Prayer Network is a 50-state union bringing you strategic state and national information that you'll need for effective targeted prayer. With your free membership at usrpn.org, you'll have the source for key intelligence that will help put your prayer into focused action. USRPN.org has scores of contributors and thousands of members, and USRPN.org will keep you aware and armed. Sign up now. Registration is free. USRPN.org. Make a stand. Stand for right. Discover the power of prayer. Join Cindy Jacobs for the 10-Minute Prayer School exclusively at generals.org. God Knows is an outreach of Generals International and is only made possible through the generous donations of partners like you. Thank you. For more resources and information on how to partner with us, please visit our website at www.godknows.tv or write us at P.O. Box 340, Red Oak, Texas 75154.